Welcome to today's video where we dive deep into the intriguing world of hacking. We'll explore how hacking actually works, debugging myths and shedding light on the processes involved. By the end of this video, you will have a clear understanding of this complex subject. So let's get started. And before we begin, if you are someone who is interested in building a career in cybersecurity by graduating from the best universities or a professional who decides to switch careers with cybersecurity by learning from the experts, then try giving a shot to Simply Learn's postgraduate program in cybersecurity with modules from MIT Schwarzman College of Engineering. The course link is mentioned in the description box and pinned comment. That will navigate you to the course page where you can find a complete overview of the program being offered. And if these are the types of videos you would like to watch, then hit the subscribe button, like, and press on the bell icon to never miss on future content. So stay tuned with us until the end of this video, and don't forget to register your opinion in the comment section below. So now, first let's define hacking. Hacking is the unauthorized access, manipulation, or exploitation of computer systems or networks. It's crucial to note that not only hacking is malicious, some ethical hackers work to improve security. And there are different types of hackers, including black hat hackers, the bad guys, white hat hackers, the good guys, and gray hat hackers, somewhere in between. Each has different motivations and intentions. Now let's delve into the methods hackers use. Hackers have an arsenal of tools such as key loggers, rats, that is remote access trojans, and DDoS, that is DDoS attacks, distributed denial of service, and we will discuss these tools and their functions and how hackers use them to hack. And I hope you guys have heard about the major hacking incidents like the Equifax breach and the Stuxnet bomb. So these were the major hacking events that happened during the cybersecurity era. And now we'll see how hackers hack with an example. Keep in mind that this explanation is for educational purposes and should not be used for illegal activities. And I have an announcement for you guys that is, if you want to kickstart your career as a cybersecurity professional in 6 months, then try giving a shot to Simply Learn's Caltech Cybersecurity Bootcamp. The course link or the bootcamp link is mentioned in the description box and pinned comment. That will navigate you to the bootcamp page where you can find a complete overview of the program being offered. And starting with the first method, that is password cracking. So, we will discuss the steps how hackers use this method to hack a person system or the targeted systems. So the first is target identification. So the hacker identifies a target account or system they want to access. And then the step two, they do is password enumeration. They gather information about the target, such as username, email address, or any publicly available information. Then there comes the step three, password guessing. Using various techniques, the hacker attempts to guess the password either manually or with automated tools. And then comes the step four, success or failure. If the hacker successfully guesses the password, they gain unauthorized access. If not, they may try different combinations or other methods. So this was about the method password cracking. And these were the steps which hackers use to hack the persons or the targeted systems. Now moving on to the second method that is malware infections. So here we will see the steps. So the first step in this method is malware creation. The hacker creates or acquires malicious software such as viruses, trojans, or spyware. Second step, that is the delivery. The hacker needs to deliver the malware to the victim. They may use email attachments, infected websites, or social engineering techniques to entice the victim to download or execute the malware. Step 3. Installation. Once the victim executes the malware, it installs itself on the device, often without their knowledge. Then comes the step 4. Malicious actions. The malware carries out its intended malicious actions such as stealing data, monitoring activities or providing remote access to the hacker. So this is how hackers use this technique that is the malware infection technique to hack the targeted systems. Now moving on to the third system or the third method that is the man in the middle attack. So here the step one involves network interception. The hacker positions themselves between the victim's device and the intended server, intercepting data traffic. Then comes the step 2, data monitoring. The hacker eavesdrops on the data being exchanged, potentially capturing sensitive information like login credentials or financial data. Then comes the step 3, data manipulation. 
In some cases, the hackers may alter the data being transmitted, which can lead to unauthorized changes or data theft. So these were the steps for the man in the middle attack method. Now coming to the fourth method that is SQL injection. And here hackers start with vulnerability identification. So the hacker identifies a website or application that is vulnerable to SQL injection due to improper input validation. Then comes the step two, injection attempt. They input malicious SQL code often through a web form or URL parameter to exploit the vulnerability. Then comes the step three, database interaction. The attacker's SQL code interacts with the website's database, potentially allowing them to extract, modify or delete data. Then comes the step four, data exfiltration. If successful, the hacker can exfiltrate sensitive data from the compromised database. So this was all about the SQL injection method. And now moving on to the next method that is farming. So in this method, the step one is DNS manipulation. The hacker either alters the victim's DNS settings or deploys malware that redirects the victim's traffic to a fraudulent website. Step two, victim redirection. When the victim tries to access a legitimate website, they are unknowingly redirected to the hacker controlled fake website. Then comes the step three, that is data collection. The hacker's fake website collects the victim's login credentials and other sensitive information. And then comes the step four, unauthorized access. With the stolen information, the hacker may gain unauthorized access to the victim's accounts or use it for malicious purposes. So this was all about this method that was farming method. Now moving on to the next method that is social engineering. So the first step in this is target selection. The hacker identifies a target and gathers information about them such as their role, workplace and interest. Pretext creation. They create a convincing pretext or scenario such as pretending to be a trusted colleague. IT technician or customer service representative. Then comes the step three, deception. Using the pretext, the hacker manipulates the victim into revealing sensitive information like login credentials or personal data. Step four, information exploitation. With the obtained information, the hacker can gain access to accounts, systems or data or use it for fraudulent activities. So this was all about the social engineering method which hackers use to hack the person system. Now moving on to the next method that is phishing attack. So in this, the first step is reconnaissance. The hacker begins by researching the target. Let's say the target is a company called ABC Incorporation. Then comes the step two, creating a fake email. The hacker crafts a convincing email that appears to be from a trusted source, such as the IT department of ABC Incorporation. The email might have the subject urgent security update required. And then comes the deception. Inside the mail, there's a message stating that there has been a security breach and employees need to update their login credentials immediately to protect their accounts. The email contains a link that supposedly leads to the company's login page. Step four, clicking the link. An unsuspecting employee at ABC Incorporation receives the email and clicks on the provided link, believing it to be genuine. And then comes the step five fake login page. The link takes the employee to a web page that looks exactly like ABC Incorporation's official login page. However, it's a fake page created by the hacker. Then comes the step six, entering credentials. The employee thinking they are on the real login page enters their username and password. Then comes the seventh step, data capture. The hacker captures the entered credentials as they are transmitted through the fake login page. Then comes the step eight, unauthorized access. Armed with stolen login credentials, the hacker gains access to employees account and potentially to sensitive company information. So in this example, the hacker used a phishing attack to trick an employee into divulging their login credentials. This is just one of many methods hackers use to compromise security. It highlights the importance of being cautious and verifying the authenticity of emails and websites, especially when they request sensitive information. To protect against such attacks, individuals and organizations should regularly educate themselves on cybersecurity best practices and use strong, unique passwords for their accounts. These steps outline the general process involved in each hacking method. It's important to note that ethical hackers use similar knowledge and techniques to identify and fix vulnerabilities, helping organizations improve their security. So this was all about this tutorial and now let's take a minute to hear from our learners who have experienced massive success in their careers by opting out the bootcamp and the postgraduate program in cybersecurity. Hi, I'm Philip. I'm 61 years old and last year I upskilled with Simply Learn's postgraduate program in cybersecurity after working 30 years in the IT sector in various different profiles. 
I'm happy to tell you that I was able to clear and pass my CISSP and CCSP certification exams on the first attempt after taking the course. The course, I must say, was packed with practical examples. It was led by highly skilled certified instructors with many companies before as a, as a security analyst and an architect on a contract basis, but I needed some stability, which I got with the job I just started with Infosys as a cybersecurity consultant. Happened on the first. And if these are the types of videos you would like to watch, then hit the subscribe button, like and press on the bell icon to never miss on future content. Until next time, stay safe and Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.